Morning, Deborah. Are you okay? I'm good. Yeah. I've just. <laughs> we haven't said good morning. No, I said good morning, but you you were ignored me again. So. <laughs> Dragons Den, Britain's most intense elevator pitch, in which aspiring entrepreneurs go head to head with five deal-hungry multimillionaires. Peter Jones. I love this job. Titan of tech and the den's longest-serving dragon. You need to take a deep breath. I know, I'm literally shaking. Deborah Meaden, the sustainability champion <laughs> who puts her money where her mouth is. Sadly, that money is staying right where it is. Tuka Suleiman, a fashion industry maverick <laughs> who's never afraid to take a punt. I have to be passionate. That's fascinating. Zara Davies. I want to eat your face. The queen of crafts. Look at this way, Stephen. Who tells it exactly as it is. I'm just trying to cut through the BS and get it straight. Thank you. And Stephen Bartlett. Here we go. Bon, bon, bon. Social media mogul. He's the baby of the bunch. And bringer of fresh fire. Have you got anything nice to say, Tuka? No. Tonight. This time next year. We'll be millionaires. What a wonderful dog. I really like what you're doing. What would you say that you're not good at? I guess controlling my anxiety because I've got autism. Would you rather have Stephen than myself? Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Are you serious? I feel like you've just sucked the energy out of the room. Tuka doesn't understand tech valuations. No, I'm a realist, and tech valuations are over, my friend. Oh, my uh, God. Ooh. Welcome back to the 20th series of Dragon's Den. Over the years, plenty has changed, but the stakes remain the same. Succeed and win the backing of a dragon, fail and leave with nothing. First into the den and trying everything to bring them good luck, are partners James Morgan and Anushka Fernando. Along with their beloved pug, Bertie, we need to kiss the pug for luck. Mm. <laughs> Whose illness was the driving force behind starting their company? Our dog's not particularly well, and um, we just want to make every day count. Oh, are you so <laughs> sorry? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> sorry, I was just, you know, okay. I'm fine, yeah. It's oh. burnt, isn't it? Oh, bless you. Today, they hope one dog owning dragon in particular might share their passion. We do think Stephen is just so inspirational and I think he'd really get our business. Hello, Dragons. I'm James. This is my partner, Anushka, and this is our boy, Bertie. Together, we are Pop and Bark. Today, we're seeking £35,000 worth of investment in return for 5% equity within our company. When Bertie was a puppy, he sadly had a huge spinal operation, which meant that he missed out on vital socialisation. So Anushka organised a pug meet-up in a local park to help Bertie make some friends. Now, this was a huge success, bringing local dog owners together. One day, we decided to move our pug meet-up indoors, and our very first event, Pug Cafe, was born. The idea was simple. It was going to be a social experience for the pug. We prepared pup cakes, puppuccinos, lots of grammable photo opportunities. We took our events on tour around the UK and expanded into doggy discos and parties. Under our brands, we have the likes of Cockapoo Cafe, Dash and Discos and Frenchie Cafe, to name but a few. Thank you so much for listening. And if anyone would like to say hello to Bertie before he wheels off. Me. Hi, Bertie. <laughs> He's not going to maul me, is he? No, no, he He's might give you a lick. <laughs> Doggy Days Out are the offering from James Morgan and Anushka Fernando. What a wonderful dog. Aww. Who are seeking £35,000 for a 5% share in their business. Lots of slobber on my hands. While Stephen Bartlett attempts to dry out, Tuka Suleiman aims to discover if this is a proposition to salivate over. So how does it work? So I've got a little puppy. Tell me what you're offering me. What puppy do you have? Cavapoo. A Cavapoo. Well, you would come to our Cavapoo Cafe. So on the day, we transform a 
aspirational, lovely venue. And for the dog, there's going to be a doggy bakery full of treats. The dog comes up with the owner. A pa the puppuccino bar toppings, tender yeah. will be like, what kind of treats does your dog like? And they'll be like, I love peanut butter. The dog picks the topping. Yes, exactly. they do. Oh, right. So, so yes. they'll be, like they'll a be on Ben and Jerry's type yes. of thing. Yes, uh, exactly. So how much do you spend on that day to prepare the venue? So an average event will take five thousand pounds turnover. And That's your turnover, but what would it cost you? Five hundred pounds. So give me a view of like what your what the big ambition is for this. So the big ambition would be to expand into more brands. For instance, the Corgi Cafe that we've recently done. Corgis. I need bigger. I need bigger than Corgi Cafe. OK, so to give you an idea of scaling up, I am going to use Corgi as an example, OK? Corgi Cafe has sold out. It's got 400 people on a waiting list. It's taken a turnover of £15,000. It's got absolutely every single media outlet begging to come. The first time. Yes. Not the 17th and then time. We plan to use that as a platform to take it to America because corgis are really loved in America and it's going to be featured on ABC, NBC. How do you stop someone else taking Corgi Cafe to America? Um, you can't really. How do you defend against that? People have done it in the past, they do it, but they don't do it as well as us. We are the experts in this field. It's not rocket science, though, right? 500 quid setup costs per event. It's the investment beforehand in, in that as well. So we've got about, I would say, £50,000 worth of, of props to really... So it's mm. not just simply we go into the venue and rock up with this. There are maybe between 6 to 12 photo opportunities in there. You're very it's... social media friendly, I'm guessing. I exactly, yeah. TikTok. We have got TikTok, yes. We, we, we've not, not really, it. we've not really cracked it though. You need, you need to do that. Oh, please don't get me started with PC Jones. I'm social media friendly. My, some of my dragons here aren't, but I'm very social media friendly. Parties for pooches across the pond and online potential are a seemingly irresistible combination for Stephen Bartlett. But Sarah Davies is more interested in the duo's journey to date than what the future could hold. How long have you been going, how much have you turned over and how much money have you made? We've been going five years now. Mm -hmm. So the first year, it was 27,000 turnover and we broke even. Year two, we turned over 84,000 and a net of 30,000. Year three, we turned over 101,000 and a net of 40,000. This next part, we call it year four, but it was the pandemic when we weren't able to do events indoors. Net loss of 3,006. And uh, this year, we're looking at a turnover of 185,000 with a net profit of 80,000. I think you've picked up really well post-pandemic yeah. then. Well done. A lot Thank of businesses you. haven't managed to bounce back in the same way. The pet care entrepreneurs are clearly setting both tongues and tails wagging. Will the den's biggest doggy devotee be barking mad about James and Anushka's canine cafes? I love it when something starts off with an idea and then you build and you build. And I can absolutely see Anushka put you in front of anybody and you could engage. But I think barriers to entry, mm. are there aren't any because somebody can copy it. Mm. And you know what? They probably won't do it as well as you, because I bet you do them really well, but they will do it. The trouble is they'll get away with it. So it's true. We are the magic. And so we know what it takes to have a really memorable you know, And I'm going to stop you. I'm only going to stop you because I know that. The problem is when people try to duplicate sure. it, it might not be as good an event as you but they'll get there first. OK. Now, you're going to have to let me say those two words. So I'm really sorry, guys. I won't be investing. Never. Okay. And as long as Anushka lets me say it, I'm afraid I'm out. A blow for Anushka and James as Deborah Meaden walks away from the deal. Will Sarah Davies be willing to swap crafts for crafts? Guys, I'm the only non-dog owner sitting here. 
So I have zero empathy as a consumer for this product. I think you need somebody on board who is passionate for this product. And that's not me. So it's not an investment for me today and I'm out. OK. I always speak from my head and my heart simultaneously. And I think that when you were pitching, the way that you came in and pitched about the events, the Instagrammable nature of this business, even when you were answering questions, you answered questions and you were very directional as well, directly to Stephen. You, you have come in here knowing that there is one person that can really change your business because you are at this stage all wrapped around the social media element of this. So I'm not going to make you an offer okay. and say that I'm out, but I wish you the very best. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. A double dose of disappointment for James and Anushka as Peter Jones senses they're favouring the dragon to his right. So does the den social media guru intend to play ball? There's a piece here which we've got to figure out, which is how this becomes a really scalable, non-lifestyle business. However, the thing that overrides my concern there is I just think you guys are great. And you've come in asking for 35 grand, which isn't a huge bet to take on two people. So I'm going to make you an offer. <laughs> um, I'm going to offer you all of the money for 20% of the business. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. James and Anushka's dream deal appears close to becoming a reality. Only Tuka Suleiman is yet to show his hand. Does he also see potential profits in Perks for Pets? What would you want from me if I made you an offer? Can I take this one? We've got so many low-hanging fruit opportunities that we don't know which one to select. I just wanted to know whether it's scalability-wise it's limited or whether you had physical pop-ups for three months, six months, where you created a space, you called it the cafe, every Monday it was cabapoos, every Tuesday it was... and people would bring their dogs in and you'd have... I don't know. Well, you've answered your question of how you could add value is producing an idea like that, cos I'll be honest with you, that's not something we've actually discussed. I'm going to make you an offer. Okay. I'll offer you all of the money, but I want 25%. Yeah. Have a chat. Yeah, back thank the you. Mm. What a thrill. By the light. <laughs> James and Anushka have two competing offers to consider. Tuka Suleiman wants a quarter of their business. 25% is too much. And Stephen Bartlett, 20%. Still four times the equity, which was originally on offer. I think maybe they'll ask him if he would be willing to take it down to 15. OK. Yeah, I think so. Right. Yeah, yeah. OK. okay. The couple appear poised to try and bag a more competitive deal. Always a strategy fraught with risk. Thank you so much for your offers. We're just so thrilled. Would there be any possibility of when you get your investment back to drop it down? To what percentage? <sighs> Ideally 10%. I don't think anyone's going to do that for that, but yeah. I, think, I think 15. Oh, I hate what I'm about to say. Oh. I'm going to say that I'm out. Oh, goodness. Because I, I think the offer I gave you was so good. I felt like there was so much in this business that I was going to have to fix, and it's concerning to me that that wasn't clear enough. I'd but I, beg... like, you guys are amazing and I wish you the very best. Please, Me and can Pablo you reverse are be the idea? Events. Reverse, I'm no, so I... sorry. Yeah, OK. So what do you want to do? I would just want to take your offer back. No. So would you rather have Stephen than miss myself? Oh, I'm so... Can I be honest with you? On that basis, I'm out. 
Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. It takes nerves of steel to negotiate in the den, and for Anushka and James, it backfired. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Doesn't matter. They leave without investment, but they aren't the only ones to feel frustrated. I thought 20% was fair, Very lower fair. than Tuka. The fact that they can't see that is concerning to me. I thought it was a very and fair offer. I was shocked. I'm, I'm, shocked. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. I'm devastated. Oh. Don't worry. I'm so sorry. It doesn't matter, come here. It's fine. Oh my God, I stuffed it up. Don't worry, darling. Stephen would have been perfect and should have just said, yeah, it's there and then. I'm so sorry. Don't worry. I just feel Not a lot. Next into the den is Ben Pearson, an entrepreneur who spotted a big gap in the market before turning life's challenges into the driving force behind his business. I'm really proud to be here today. Having autism, it takes a lot of guts to be here, but I'd like to inspire others and show them where there is a will, there is a way, and we should not be held back for having these slightly different ways of thinking. When it comes to a choice of business partner, Ben has a particular investor in mind. Looking at the history and expertise of the Dragons, I think Tuca would be the one, but I'm not ruling anything out. Hello Dragons, my name is Ben Pearson. I'm the owner and founder of Big Clothing For You. From a young age, I was diagnosed with autism and several other disabilities. I spent the majority of my life in social care, young offenders institutes and homeless. I became nearly 30 stone from having mental health issues, but I took a lot of counselling and overcame these barriers. But there was one thing I couldn't do, and I couldn't find clothing on the high street. There wasn't a thing that fitted me. So, in 2015, I started Big Clothing For You from my bedroom, sewing on eBay and Amazon. In 2021, we turned over 2.9 million. In 2022, we we're on track to turn over 3.5 million. I'm here today to pitch for 150,000 for 10% stake in Big Clothing For You. But why? I might look like I've done it, but I haven't. I'm stuck and I can't expand. I can't get into the international markets and that's what I'm looking for. So please do have a look at our range and a couple of samples in your boxes. Thank you. Can I have a look? Of course, please do, Tuka. A plus-sized clothing company with plus-sized international ambition is the proposition from entrepreneur Ben Pearson. Hope you like what you see. He's seeking £150,000 in return for a 10% share of his business. Good. Fashion tycoon Tuka Suleiman has already got hands-on with Ben's products, but now he wants to get a feel for his business. Ben, Tuka. Hi, Tuka. Well done. Ah, thank you. I'm very impressed. You know, the funny thing is, is that this is a market that has been ignored. Mm. So your size starts from where? So we start at 2XL and we go right up to 8XL. 8XL? Yeah. So that shirt that Deborah's got mm. probably takes about two and a half metres. Yep. And how much does it cost you? Uh, that was £6.80. Great. And we sell and what do you that sell it for? £29.99. Wow. And oh. it's nicely made. Have you looked at them? They're really no, no, no. nicely They're made. So that's great value. No wonder you're cleaning up over here <laughs> on the turnover. Yep. So, you don't do formal wear, do you? Yes, we do. We do have a collection shirts? that covers, it. yep, formal shirts, suits. And how much were you selling the suits for? Around £150. Whoa! You're cheaper than my brand! <laughs> <laughs> Look, to me, there's, an, there's a big opening here. How have you funded the business so far? So, when I was one years old, my grandfather left me a big trust fund. And when I was late teens, uh, the trustees uh, decided that that could be released to me. Wow. And when you say a large amount, was that...? Substantial in the hundreds. Hundreds of thousands of pounds? Sure. So, 
Just take me through last year. You said you turned over 2.9 million. Yeah. What was your profit on that? The gross profit was 69%, and the net was 200,000. And the next year? We're looking about 5 million. And how are you going to start selling overseas? Do you have an international website capability? Good point. No, we don't. So this is one of the reasons why we need the investment. We actually need a dedicated resource to display correctly in these countries. And this could be quite interesting, because I happen to own one of the world's leading e-commerce software companies that sure. takes brands to global markets. Could be interesting. Peter Jones hints at a potentially lucrative tie-in that could see Ben's garments go global. Now, Stephen Bartlett is keen to find out more about the man behind the menswear. I have to say, I'm, I'm really, really inspired by your journey, specifically because you mentioned that you were in a Young Offenders Institute at some Correct. point. Yeah. But I wanted to get some more detail as to how your life has, has shifted in such an inspiring way. Sure. So I found there was a gap in the care system and it rendered me homeless. So I hit rock bottom and I thought, I've got nothing, but I've got nothing to lose. So while I sat on the streets, food banks, I thought, yeah, I can pick myself up. And I just started ploughing forward. OK, and is that Harvey Price? It is indeed. How did you get to, to meet them? Um, he was struggling to find clothing and 18 months of persistency, knocking on Kate's best friend's door, I got to meet him with Kate and uh, we never looked back. And so is, is he a brand ambassador? He is. OK. Yeah. What would you say that you're not good at? Very good question. I often ask people in interviews this. <laughs> so there's many things I'm not good at. I guess controlling my anxiety because I've got autism. Yeah. So um, coming here today, I'm not very good at interacting with people. I don't think I am in my mind. It takes a lot of courage for me to yeah. do it. Yeah, we've just demonstrated how good you are at controlling your mind for, for the benefit of yourself which is absolutely exceptional. You're one of the best pitches I've ever I've seen since I've been in the den. Oh, thank you very much. Ben's temperament and tenacity are winning him plenty of admirers in the den. Will his business's numbers make a similarly positive impression? When you started in 2015, how much capital did you put in to start the business? 680,000. So is the director's loan account still sitting at 680? Uh, no, the director's loan account is about 1.3, I think. So you've got personal cash invested in this business of 1.3 million? Correct. When do you plan to take that out? I don't. Rather than drawing a salary, I've been taking some out of the director's loan account as and when I need it. OK. So what is your stock on hand? What's your balance sheet looking like at the moment, basically? Uh, balance sheet, I think, stock's about 2.3 million. You've got stock of 2.3 million. Given that a high proportion of your business is trend, you're sitting on a lot more stock than I was expecting. I don't know in a fashion business, too, but what's a normal...? Well, normally, your stock cover should be about six, seven hundred grand. So you've got too much stock. Two million pounds worth of stock offsets a large director's loan. Money Ben could withdraw from the business at any time. His books appear balanced, but for one of the dragons, things simply aren't adding up. Ben, just take me through. So where you are today, what's, what's your sort of retained earnings? In other words, the, the profits that you've ploughed back into the business and you've retained in the company, where would, where would they sit at today? Yeah, I think they're... Just short of 800,000. And how much cash in the bank have you got? 143,000. And creditors? I think it's about 250,000. And debtors? Under 5,000. OK. And your total stock is 2.3. Is that 2.3 cost? Or is that retail price? Uh, that's at the retail valuation by Deloitte's. Yeah. Retail, not cost? Yes, that's the retail. Oh, that explains so what's the, a lot. what's the cost? Yeah. The cost of that stock? About 600. When you first come in and say you've got 2.3 million in stock, you're going, wow, you've got some serious cash behind this, this business. But when you deduct the reality of life, you've put such a large amount of capital in. 
and you're not taking any salary at all, and any money you do take out, you're taking and reducing your director's loan. Is that a perfect summary of the business? It's a, a good way of looking at it, certainly. Yep. I'm good with numbers. You certainly are. You say you like honesty, so I'm going to be really honest. I was going to make you an offer. Yep. But I'm sadly going to say I'm not going to invest because of that only reason is that the balance sheet just demonstrates that the business isn't quite there. So I can't, I've got to say that I'm out. A Peter Jones probing reveals that Ben's balance sheet is nowhere near as healthy as it first appeared and he's lost his first dragon. Will Sara Davies see sufficient promise in the business to make its CEO an offer? I love you. You are the most straight-talking person I've ever met in business, and it is so refreshing. But on the flip side, that 1.3 million still owed out to you on a business that's been highly profitable for so many years that is just ringing really big alarm bells for me. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Ben, you are brilliant. It's a real pleasure to talk to somebody who you ask a question, they answer it, mm. and you believe it. You know, I can work with that any day of the week. But I've been sitting here battling with the balance sheet. I'm afraid that side of me is one. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Ben, I've wrote a lot of things down here, and there's a couple of words that I wrote over and over again, seemingly, and that is describing you, smart, inspiring, relentless, dogged, and trustworthy. And then I wrote, I want to love and be inspired by this industry and business as much as I am by the entrepreneur. I'm not incredibly passionate about this industry. Both aspects are incredibly important for me to want to make an investment because I'm really, really compelled by one of those aspects, but not by the other. That is the reason I'm going to say that I'm out. Four dragons down and the clothing entrepreneur's prospects of a deal now hang by the slimmest of threads. Only Tuka Suleiman, who was originally Ben's most wanted, is yet to declare his position. You know, I am sitting on that fence because it, when you came out with your balance sheet, I just thought, oh, deflated. It's not in the same healthy state as you, you pretend it to be, unfortunately. Okay. You know? Mm. Silence in the den. If you don't make an offer for this one, Tukra, I don't know what you're going to make an offer for. Mm. It's got your name written all over it. Yeah. Look, I I'm going to make you an offer. Sure. All the money, 150,000, but I want 35%. I'd love to accept your offer. Great. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. brilliant. Well Fantastic. done, Ben. So pleased. Ah, cheers. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you. Brilliant. It's a perfect fit as Ben sews up £150,000 worth of investment and the backing of a dragon whose skill set is ideally tailored to his company's needs. I've never been so pleased somebody else won an investment. Congratulations, Tuka. Thank you. Tuka. Thank Tuka, you. Really well done. Thank you. Having Tuka on board is going to be a fantastic addition to our business, just what we need. If anybody else out there has autism, what I would say, especially if they're young, never give up. Don't let anybody stand in your way. A dragon since day one of the den. I said a hip hop, the hip to the hip, hip hop, you don't stop. Peter Jones has stacked up a list of deals as long as his inside leg. Thank you. <laughs> Over the years, he's become the investor of choice for many entrepreneurs. Peter Jones would be our number one. I really have my eyes on Peter. I'm really keen to work with Peter. A fact of den life he modestly accepts. There's no question in my mind that I'm the person for you. I doubt that. Though not everyone sees things quite the same. I'd shake your hand at 40 today. Sorry to 
to the both of you, but I'd shake your hand at force here today. Mark, you're in danger of well, alienating Mark, the other dragons. Mark, I will accept. I'm sorry. Well, say I'm sorry. You yeah. came for one person. Oh, uh, I'll night. accept your offer. As the years pass by, Peter's popularity shows no sign of disintegration. And next up tonight, with something perfect for the den's tallest denizen, a Chris and Martin Andrew. Did you like a job? Yes. What are we bringing into the den today for the dragons? We're bringing an extra six inches in bed. It's not the couple's cheeky tagline, but rather their display that has got Stephen Bartlett asking one of life's great bedroom-related questions. Why do people have those things at the end of their beds? Like an ottoman. That's for putting away your cushions. Good luck. This time next year. We'll be millionaires. Hello Dragons, my name's Chris and this is my husband Martin and together we own Bed Stretch Limited. We would like £80,000 for a 20% of your, of your money, uh, for a 20% share in our, in our company. Five million people in the UK are over six foot tall, so they're too short, too tall for a standard six foot three inch bed. So we have invented and patented the pillow shelf, which is the ultimate bed extender. The pillow shelf sits at the head end of a divan bed, between the bed and the wall. It's quick to install and it's easily transportable, providing a longer bed wherever you are. We'd like to show you how it, it works. So Peter? could we could we ask Peter as the taller dragon? Yeah. Um, if he would come forward. How tall are you, Peter? Six foot seven. Would you mind laying on the bed as it is at six foot three? Selling the dream of a decent night's sleep for tall people, a bed extending entrepreneurs, Chris and Martin Andrew. Obviously, we can see that Peter's feet are hanging off the end of the bed. If you'd like to now get off Peter, if you wouldn't mind. They're looking for £80,000 in exchange for 20% of their business. You slot the pillow shelf in place. Push the bed back, move the pillows onto the pillow shelf. The couple's components are a perfect fit which is more than can be said for Peter Jones. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, Peter is exceptionally tall, and this is a six-foot-three bed. On a king-size bed with a six-inch extender, it makes it seven-foot long. Yeah. Their product demo appears to have won Chris and Martin a customer. This is almost perfect for me. You've sold one. <laughs> <laughs> but will it be enough to win them a deal? Genuinely, I can't believe it. This is something I've been looking for every time I come up to film Dragons. We're put into this hotel. We're in a nice hotel at the moment, but the bed, it's, you know, it's like a hobbit bed. It's really small. <laughs> and at the moment, it looks a bit weird, but I sleep diagonal. Would that solve your problem? I think it... I do need a bigger one, you can tell, because I'm six mm -hmm. foot seven, but I th genuinely we'll think it's... We'll make you one, Peter. Genius. No, thank you. I mean, if you could do it by tonight, that'd be nice. <laughs> You can have that one there, so, yeah. So, your market here is hotels. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I can't see me walking in with that like a frame. It'll look like I'm doing sort of refurbishment, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I could see you going to a hotel and saying, look, you must have a requirement. And you could even argue every hotel should at least have a few. Absolutely. Exactly. The problem is that no one knows it exists. Yeah. So, literally, from our point of view, um, it's, it's about getting the word out there. It's genius. Thank I think you. it's great. No shortage of praise for Chris and Martin's product from the six foot seven Peter Jones. Now Deborah Meaden is keen to get to grips with their business's vital statistics. So at the moment, are you actually trading? We are trading. Um, we've been trading for three years and we're selling roughly 120 a year. And have you sold any to hotels? We have. We sold to the Luton Who two years ago. They had seen us at an exhibition and bought two. Which exhibitions did you attend? <laughs> well, we did the Independent Hotel Show and, well, I'm a bit cross because Martin and the other guy that went with us didn't use the zapper. So right. we had all, you know, you can zap people's we passes. We spent three days talking to hundreds of people and we got four names. So. 
because they didn't zap. And I feel sure that we would have been able to actually move forward a little bit better. Yeah, don't be but... too cross with Martin, because if I see something at an exhibition that I'm really interested in, I will take their details and get back to them. We think Because COVID if may you're have solving my problem, yeah. Yeah. I will find you. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Chris and Martin, are you in discussion with anybody that you might get an order or a big order from? No. No, not, not at the moment. And why? We were waiting for our patent and we were going to do a TV advertisement. TV advertising? I mean, what on earth is that all about? Well, You're going to get millions of people looking at it who have no interest in it whatsoever. On, on the basis that it gives you an extra six inches in bed, we feel that it might be a talking <laughs> subject. No, we've already discussed really who's interested in your product are the hotels. So we spent some time phoning hotels, but you get asked to send a, a, an email, which ends up somewhere. Walk in with one. If Peter phoned up a hotel, they'd probably have one for lunch. <laughs> I mean, it's a showstopper. Walk in with one. Just show it to them. Yeah. When it comes to winning new custom, Deborah Meaden feels there's simply no substitute for the direct approach. But Stephen Bartlett isn't convinced that Chris and Martin have really solved the short bed problem. Peter's been complaining about short beds for too long. Gives us a headache about it. And when I saw him lie on this bed and his feet were still over the edge of the bed, this is not going to cure my headache. No. Peter's still going to complain. No, we'll, he... we'll make him a, a nine-inch version. So all you could give Peter is another three inches? Yeah. I'm not sure he'd be satisfied. No, but if we gave him an extra nine inches, he would. <laughs> yeah, he probably would. I can tell you, being tall, dark and very handsome, I'm the perfect dragon for this business. He's a perfect customer for the business. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Un unfair. For me, I think this is genius. But I'm just waiting for this... Make uh, an offer. ...get out. Look, you're not interested. Why don't you just say you're out and get on with it? We can move on. Because you're just <laughs> not the dragon. They don't need any help from you anyway. And social Ooh. media can't help this business. So make an offer. You said you could help this business. We've, tr we've tried the long bed option as an, an option. He was about to make you an offer. Sorry? I'm make an offer. Come on. You don't, you're don't. you not interested. My my presence in this deal is not contingent no, it's not on you, you making actually, an I'm waiting for all the dragons. I was just being tactical. So make an offer, Peter. Come on. They're all, your cards. They're all a waste of the time. Tall, dark, but not confident. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit tight. Peter Jones doesn't appear in any rush to make a decision. So is Deborah Meaden in a more decisive frame of mind. My worry for you is when people think about the application of this, there's a few barriers before mm. they actually buy it. Mm -hmm. Can we fit it into the room? You know, how many are we going to have if a party of six people turn up and they all want one and I've only got, you know. So coupled with the fact that you've actually shown it to the hotel industry. If it was genuinely the answer, I promise you, people who had been in touch with you, I don't think it's going to be a great investment for me. So I won't be investing, I'm afraid. I'm out. Deborah Meaden becomes the first dragon to reject a deal. Is Sarah Davies any more willing to get into bed with Chris and Martin? I think you will do well out of this business and I categorically believe that you do need investment and help to make this succeed. But I don't think I would be the right investor for your business, so I'm out. Thank you very much, Sarah. I don't think, with all due respect to yourselves, I don't think you are go-getters. No. You probably need to employ someone to help you. To go out there and knock on the doors. Absolutely. And for me to part with 80,000, knowing full well that you haven't really got a plan, worries me. For that reason, I'm out. Fair Thank enough. you, Tika. Thank you. So, in this case, I don't know how I would make a significant return on this business in the near term. So, I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you the very best. A trio of turndowns for the bedding entrepreneurs. Only Peter Jones remains in play. 
He showered their product with compliments. But is he prepared to put his money where his mouth is? Martin Chris. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. I think it's genius. Thank Obviously, you. you know that, because it's something that's always on my mind. It's something that always affects me when I travel. And I think this is a perfect example of where social media will have zero impact mm. on a business. This is more a traditional go-to-market strategy. So you need me to give you the strategy. You need me to open the doors. You need a full-time person to run this to go and literally, as one of the dragons suggested, walk into the hotels, open this opportunity up. But that's going to cost you more than 80,000. I would need to own so much of your business that I'm not going to make you an offer. Oh. I knew oh. you were coming to that. All of that led you astray. Please do exactly as I suggested and try and get into those hotels but I'm not going to invest and say that I'm out. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you so much. So near and yet so far for Chris and Martin, who must leave the den without a deal. They didn't get it. No, they did get it. No, they didn't get the size of the market. Whilst the entrepreneurs are still thinking big size clearly isn't everything to a dragon, even a very tall one. I can't believe you led them up the alleyway there. Peter, I'm, I'm putting my money on the fact you've got a bed that's big enough for I you. have. I've, I've got seven yeah. foot by seven yeah. foot. Just didn't have it last night. <laughs> it's all done now. We'll just uh, onwards carry and on. Upwards. Onwards and upwards. Six and, uh, inches to the world. Absolutely. Well, nine <laughs> inches for Peter. He's greedy, though, isn't he? <laughs> Now, the rising cost of living has made it harder to save up for future plans. Our last entrepreneur, Craig Smith, is hoping he can make a difference with his tech business that lends a hand. I would describe myself as, like, an accidental CEO. I don't have a financial services background. I just have a passion for the problem. The world of commerce may be new to Craig, but he's hoping that won't hinder his performance in the den. I feel like I know my pitch. Feeling pretty confident about that. I'm hoping I don't do too many ums and ahs. And when it comes to the questions, I don't know what they're going to ask, right? So I'm, I'm apprehensive about it. <sighs> You've got to take risks in life, right? And this is one of them. Hello, my name is Craig Smith and I'm the founder and CEO of Just Lend. I am seeking £100,000 for 2% of my business. In 2020, 5.9 million people borrowed money from family and friends. This number is expected to rise with the current cost of living crisis and rising interest rates. Whilst millions of people borrow from family and friends each year, a number turned bad. This is because it's relational, it's emotional, it's not rational. Our aim is to change the way people borrow and overcome the pitfalls in family lending. For lenders, we provide tools like loan agreements and being able to track payments. For borrowers, we take the awkwardness and embarrassment out of asking family and friends for money. We make money by charging a 5% platform fee and a 0.1% servicing fee. We've submitted a patent in the United States and cumulatively borrowers are seeking uh, £400,000 uh, on our platform. We now want to turn our attention to the people that want to lend to family and friends but don't have the confidence to do so and tell them that Just Lent is an option. A high tech take on the bank of mum and dad is the offering from Craig Smith. He's seeking £100,000 in exchange for a 2% stake in his company. Multimillionaires are used to requests for cash, but will anyone be putting their hands in their pockets for Craig? 
Hello, Craig. Hey. Hi. Right. Nice um, to meet you. So, can I just check? You've done the testing phase, and you're about to enter the open market. Is that where you are at the moment? That's where we are, yes. OK, and how does that work? So you've got a campaign going on over here, you've got friends and family going over here, these people need the cash, and the cash is sitting over there. Which part do you play in putting those two together? So imagine your sister and a husband set up a campaign for IVF. The family and friends would then come on and individually pledge investments amounts, uh, and then we would manage kind of the loan contracts, the payment tracking, you automate the repayments when it comes to the borrower so you don't have to chase um, that, that entire process, and we've automated that entire process. OK. Craig, um, I want to try and get into the details as fast as possible, and actually because you've come in with a reasonable concept, but I just want to hit the elephant in the room straight away. You have a valuation of £5 million. Sure. I think there's a number of aspects. It's taken us... Four years to kind of get the product to where it is. OK, that doesn't... Create... I know, but there's a lot of time where that's been put into it, and I think you've got to say that. We have, but what is it that's unique? I think it's the loan management system and the way in which you share the campaigns with family and friends to, to raise the finance. That's not unique, because basically what that's doing is that's creating a database of information What's, what's unique about that? What's un yeah, so it's the formalising all the information um, and pushing it out to a network of people to come back in and lend you money. Um, that's the process which I'm hoping... Yeah, that's... There's something there... Uh, on the technical side, there's something there that... Yeah, I... Oof. But Craig, Sorry, I don't know how to, I don't know. I, unfortunately, I'm not my technical CTO. No, but then so. why didn't your technical CTO come with you? Because he was nervous about coming on the show. Well, then he's an <laughs> absolute bloody... Well, he was nervous at the valuation, maybe. So, <laughs> wait, no, guys. Obviously, I'm going to ask you about the fact that you've mentioned a patent in the US. What is the specific step that you're able to get a patent over where somebody else can't? It's something around the lending management system. Um, and how that operates, which is different to couple. No, but what is peer -peer. what what is that specifically? Because I could do I, exactly the same activity with a different piece of code. Is it an element of the algorithm that provides the information? It's something on that basis, but unfortunately, I I don't. But this uh, is what I lives and explain. dies by your pitch today, because you're valuing this at a ridiculous, crazy number at the moment, five million pounds. This is madness. Craig's seven-figure price tag is dismissed by a peeved Peter Jones. Is Tuka Suleiman in a more forgiving frame of mind? Craig, for four years you've been on this, so when are you going to make profit? When are we going to start making money? November yeah. 2024. And what's a turnover? Turnover at that point is... 1.6. Yeah. So we were making then about 260,000. So you're going to make 260,000 pounds after six years. You've walked in here thinking mm. that there are some idiots in the den who are no. going to value this at five million. Oh, come on. Tuka doesn't understand tech, tech valuations broadly. So we also have. That's no, I'm sweaty. a realist. We have, and we... tech valuations are over, my friend. No, they're not. We're now back to reality. I if you look at the stock market today, mm. what stocks are crashing? So, uh, tech stocks. Tech stocks, right. And, wh and what are they wanting today? Profitability. OK, Craig, you said to Tuka you're going to make 260k. Mm. But why wouldn't you just reinvest your profits into growth, um, like every other tech company does? Yeah. I would like to scale it up. I just wanted to show a... Uh, I would want to kind of push it at a faster level. So, so why did you lie to Tuka? Uh, no, I didn't. I was showing a, a route to profitability. I don't want to know a, a route to profitability. No. He yeah. said, it, how much money are you going to make? I want I, reality. I want to go big. I want to kind of... Um, so, so how are we going to do that? How are we going to go much bigger than those numbers? So I guess we would either reinvest the profits or we'd potentially raise more capital later. How much money do you think you're going to raise over the next three years? Um, 
I, I, I don't know, and I guess that's why I want some support from the likes of yourselves. So, I don't. You don't know. The first thing you don't know is the patent that you've just invested in. You don't know what it is. You don't know how much money you're going to raise. You don't know what your net profit's going to be over the next couple of years. Therefore, you don't know what your growth is going to be. You're the CEO. I'm trying my best. Um, I think your idea is really timely. Yeah. But an idea yeah. without a great entrepreneur that has a high degree of conviction themselves is nothing but a pipe dream. Another unfavorable appraisal of this self-confessed accidental CEO. And the Den's tech titan has spotted another potential problem. If I was to type in justlend.com, what would it return? Um, we're justlend.co, we're not justlend.com. So That's why I asked the question, what would it come up with? I actually don't know. Oh, my God. Are you serious? I am serious, I don't know. Like, I'm sorry. Craig, you should know what sorry. that is. No, but you're, this is your whole brand. If there's a Just Lend out there already, the minute you launch this... So I know that there's... They a... literally close you down. That should be a big concern to you, Craig. Yeah, I mean, we got JustLend.co. Craig, I'll, I'll see where I am. Yeah. I think this is a disaster. Seriously, you have pitched really poorly today, and you have to hear that truth, because if you don't, you're going to go on taking money in for a business you don't really know how to make work yet. This is just not an investment opportunity, so I'm going to say that I'm out. Some home truths from Peter Jones, who becomes the first dragon to decline the deal. Will Sarah Davies buy into Craig's vision for the future of friend and family facing finance? I thought you did a brilliant job of positioning right at the beginning of your pitch where there was a need for this. And it's just gone downhill from there. Oh. The whole point of being here in the den is you need to sell the business proposition, you need to show passion and enthusiasm and energy and we're going here, this is the market, this is how we're going to get it. And I feel like you've just sucked the energy out of the room. Honestly, I'm not going to lie, I've sat here and I've struggled to stay focused on what you've said. I've struggled to stay awake. I know you guys are not feeling the passion, but I really am passionate about this problem. I will not give up. You just haven't convinced me that this is a good way for me to spend my money. So I won't be investing and I'm out. You've said one positive thing today. I'm not going to give up. Don't give up, because you've got a long way to go. Unfortunately, I'm not partying with my money today, and I'm out. Three dragons are now out. Is Deborah Meaden preparing to join the exodus? I think the issue with you is you have taken yourself down a couple of rabbit holes. If you're going to ask for evaluation like that, really obvious questions like, do you own that domain? And I think even more fatal, which is your patentable step? As the CEO, you should have had all of those answers. That is yeah. so important. But I really like what you're doing. I think it is very of the moment. It gives dignity to the person who is wanting to borrow money yes. without begging yes. friends and family. So it kind of, it, it takes away those really, really difficult moments. And I think there is going to be an awful lot more of that going right. on. So I'm going to make you an offer. Yeah. I'm going to ignore your valuation because it is loopy. So, I will offer you all of the money. I want 11% of the business. Okay, thank you very much. A £100,000 lifeline from Deborah Meaden, who wants over five times the equity that Craig was originally looking to give away. Only Stephen Bartlett remains. 
is he prepared to match, or even better, his fellow Dragon's offer? This is a really interesting one for me, Craig, because the reason I'm still here is because I've been trying to find a way. And sometimes my heart, it like, it takes control of the like control room and it, and it clouds my judgment. But I have this like guiding principle, which is no matter how much you love an idea, and I love the idea, I think it's incredibly timely, I have to have first and foremost, complete conviction that the entrepreneur stood in front of me is gonna be this unbelievable confidence instilling entrepreneur. I can look or uh, I can look or present in a certain type of way. My last company, like I wasn't I wasn't the founder, but I went into the pitches when it came to the navigation. What's happening today? Um, I'm nervous. This is a very out Yeah, I understand of the that. I, I understand that. Um, it I'm just seems like that. you just don't know anything about the business. <laughs> This is so much, and I'm, st yeah. Um, I just know we can do it. I really believe, like, I really believe in this. I spent a lot of time doing it, and I just know that working together, um, actually, yeah. I think there's, there's just there's fantastic potential. <laughs> and, okay, Craig, I, I'm gonna make you an offer. I'm going to offer you all the money for 10% of the business. Understood. Do you want to go back to the back wall or you want to make a decision instantly? I, uh, I'd like to make a decision. Deborah, um, I'd like to say thank you, but no thank you. And I'd like to accept your offer. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Well done. well done, Craig. Go and lie down and relax, and then we'll yeah. get to work. Thank you. Craig is quick to seal the deal. Oh, man. He was on the wrong end of a roasting. Thank you for the grilling. But leaves with £100,000 and a partner who can lend his plans for borrowing some real bounce. <sighs> I don't know how to describe it. It was uh, intense. Oh, man, I was so nervous. <sighs> I'm going to assume that Dan was just a little bit too hot for him. Well, you better hope. Otherwise, you've just joined his friends and family programme and lent him 100 grand. <laughs> <laughs> I've been scuba diving in the ocean and there are sharks in the ocean, but going in and being grilled by those dragons is a much tougher experience. Stephen Bartlett seals a deal on Craig's dream to make loaning cash to loved ones easier. And let's not forget tonight's other triumph, an entrepreneur who embraced his autism and difficult past to build a plus-sized clothing brand. Proof, if any, that there are no barriers to success in business or in the den. Next time... Listen, short of time, I've got people to see. It looks like it's come out of a Frankenstein's workshop. At the moment, I'm holding all the aces, you've got none. Good luck with that negotiation. The last thing I'm going to do on date night is start with excitement and end with disappointment. <laughs> know a good deal when you see one. Listen, I don't like it. Here's my accountant here, yeah? And she's joking about the accountant part. No, 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 come on. That question is your chance. I don't understand the question because I feel as though I've kind of answered it. No, you haven't. I'll remember that. Big personalities, BBC One on a mission and getting to work. Property vibes with Amanda and Alan's Italian job tomorrow from 8.30 in their first project. Up next, BBC One, who's a boss and who's not in The Apprentice. <laughs>